So the new cross we're setting up today, this is going to have us examining the principle of complementation. So complementation or complementary, uh, this is a little bit different than the spelling for like a compliment when someone tells you that you have nice hair. Uh, complementation, C-O-M-P-L-E, complementation, refers to basically uh, genetically one deficiency can be covered by another individual. So you can, we're gonna start with two flies that are mutated. And if they are mutated in different genes, then they can contribute alleles that cover the mutation for the other one. And uh, it's a good way to test. So the, the primary thing we're testing, and you probably have a few questions about this, uh, complementation testing tests whether the mutations, which we have phenotypes for, test whether they're caused by the same gene. Uh, if you have mutations in different genes, then the two parents should be able to cover each other up. If you have mutations in the same gene, then everybody's deficient in the same way and nobody can complement anybody else. So we're going to start with uh, mutations that we know are recessive. That's pretty common uh, when you isolate a mutation. It's pretty common that it is due to a recessive allele, the phenotype. And uh, conveniently, when we do this one, we're going to see evidence of complementation just in the F1 generation. So we don't have to follow this cross all the way through to the F2. So here are uh, some illustrations that show you how the alleles would line up to give you uh, complementation or no complementation. So uh, in the absence of complementation, let's say you start with flies that have bright red eyes, and other flies that have bright red eyes. And you wanna see, so not knowing necessarily what gene causes those, you could cross one by another. Uh, these would be true breeding flies. And you wanna see if they get a different phenotype in the F1 generation. So this first one shows if they are in fact mutated on the same gene, you would have recessive alleles for the A gene on one parent and recessive alleles for the A gene on the other parent. So basically, altogether, nobody has functioning uh, wild-type alleles for the A gene. So when you cross these together, of course, uh, recessive A can't give a dominant phenotype over recessive A because they're the same thing. So we have basically one broken gene all throughout. And the phenotype in the F1 individual is still bright red eyes. However, if we have uh, complementation happening, and we have a different gene that's mutated for one parent or the other. So let's say uh, left parent is mutated for the A gene and that gives that parent bright red eyes. And mutant parent two is mutated for the B gene and that gives that parent bright red eyes. So as we've seen already, that's possible that different genes give this bright red eye phenotype. We've seen scarlet, vermilion, and cinnabar all giving us this bright red eye phenotype. So if you crossed, uh, let's say this is mutated for cinnabar, if you crossed that by one mutated for scarlet, whether these genes are located on the same chromosome or different chromosomes, uh, one of those would be able to cover the other. So when these chromosomes are inherited, the one that's got the mutated A comes with a wild type functioning B or B plus. Uh, the chromosome that comes with the mutated B comes with a functioning A or A+. Plus. So these dominant alleles for A and B, they cover the recessive alleles for A and B, and you actually get a wild type phenotype here. And that's basically the principle of complementation is uh, demonstrating that you've got different genes mutated because there are two flies that are showing mutant phenotypes uh, can cross together and can remove that mutant phenotype in their offspring. All right, so we've seen, as I mentioned, cinnabar, vermilion, scarlet. Those are good ones to know. You have crossed one of these with your group. Uh, we've also seen a couple different ones that have brown eyes. If you remember, there were uh, flies with a mutation in the brown gene and also in the sepia gene. Those give us basically brown eyes. So we're gonna start with the known mutant. This is a, what would have happened, probably a, a typical cross if you were uh, discovering a new mutant. This is pretty common in genetic experiments uh, to generate a mutant phenotype and then start asking the question, okay, what did, we, <laughs> what did we break? So you could like mutate, deliberately mutate an organism, see what you get for a phenotype, and then do a complementation test 
uh, to see if you have discovered the same thing already that you've seen before or something new. So uh, your known mutant is a good reference point. So we're gonna have white mutants and scarlet mutants as our reference mutants, and then some unknown. So each cross will have a known parent and an unknown parent. And of course, both with the same phenotype. So two bright red eyed parents or two white eyed parents. And we can investigate what might be causing them to have those, uh, those phenotypes. And as we've seen already, when we talked about X linkage and inheritance, uh, there could be some differences in how X linked alleles are inherited by individuals, even in the F1 generation, we might see some different phenotypes there. So uh, there'll be reciprocal crosses as well. So we'll get uh, some, the ones that have bright red eyes will be called BR for bright red. The ones that have white eyes will be W for white. So you're gonna cross a known with an unknown, come up with a hypothesis. Uh, while you're thinking about your hypothesis, think about the number of ways that we could have these outcomes. So you can have uh, genes that are complementing each other or genes that are not complementing each other. Uh, what would that look like in your outcome? You could have genes that are located on an X chromosome. How would that look in the offspring? So lots of different ways to work out possible outcomes, uh, even in the F1 generation. And I'd like you to think about all those possible outcomes as you come up with your hypotheses. If you cover all possibilities, then you won't be surprised by any outcomes. Uh, and you'll say, well, that was one of the things we planned for. And then you sound like a very smart scientist when you do that. All right, so X-linked, as I mentioned, special consideration if you have an X-linked known or an X-linked unknown gene. And you're gonna set these up as we did before. So same way of setting up a cross and we'll see the results in two weeks. We'll see the adults of this in the F1 generation.